22nd Sunday after Trinity, the Collect, let us pray. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the church, in continual godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve thee in good works to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians, beginning with the third verse. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 21st verse. Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredst me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses.
I'd realized how much was going on this morning, I would have uh, shortened the sermon. I, I, don't, I don't go too long, so don't worry. <laughs> Do not be alarmed. Um, but I really would have shut it uh, down a bit. Um, I uh, recall once a French uh, writer who wrote a letter, and it was a long letter, and he said, I apologize for writing such a long letter. I did not have time to write a shorter one. <laughs> My text today is from our gospel, which we heard a moment ago, St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. In over four decades of preaching, I've found that the two kinds of sermons that most often get comments from people are sermons about forgiveness and sermons about trusting God and avoiding anxiety. Uh, well, today our subject obviously is forgiveness. The point that it means to make, that our gospel makes, is uh, made in two different ways. First, we should note that the lesson makes the point positively by a very simple, direct statement of our duty to forgive. But then, the lesson is reinforced negatively by a warning in story form about the danger of failing to forgive. This second negative point uh, in the form of a parable is typical of our Lord. Uh, you know, our Lord could have come down from heaven and said, here's the Nicene Creed, here are the rules, believe the one, follow the other, and everything will be fine. But instead he came and he told us stories because stories reach into us in a way that simply stating a duty doesn't. And I think that is why the second point, uh, second way in which forgiveness is taught is here. Peter has asked our Lord how often he ought to forgive when my brother sins against me. He suggests that maybe he should be willing to forgive seven times, which sounds pretty generous to most of us. Our Lord answers that he should forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven, which uh, for those math challenged is 490 times. I don't think there's any special significance to the number picked. Uh, presumably we're not dealing with um, uh, any particular uh, actual number, nor I think is it particularly significant that it's Peter who asks. He doesn't probably have a particular problem with Andrew, his, his biological brother, but we're talking about everybody, all Christians, all people. Next, it's worth noting that we're talking about forgiveness in situations in which you are in the right, in which you have been sinned against, and in which you are clearly the wronged party. Peter asks his duty to forgive when his brother has sinned against him. Both Peter and our Lord seem to assume that there is a duty to forgive even when we're in the right. The doubt only concerns the extent of that duty. Now, if the duty to forgive extends even when we're right, of course, it also applies when we're wrong. Uh, we all, uh, no, we shouldn't feel resentment when we are uh, in the wrong, but often we do, right? We do something wrong and then we resent the fact that somebody's pushed back against that. Well, it goes without saying that there the duty is clear. <clears throat> most of the, us, most of the time, are willing to forgive when we're in the wrong. Often we're willing to forgive when we put aside our own selfish special perspective and recognize the real situation from the other points of view. But that's not what Peter's asking about. How often do I have to forgive when I'm right? Next, notice the extent of Peter's first suggestion. Maybe he should forgive seven times. We're so familiar with what follows the 70 times seven bit that we uh, pass over this original proposal, but we shouldn't. Ask yourself this, when was the last time you for freely forgave somebody who was plainly in the wrong and who had injured and offended you seven times? 
Perhaps this explains Peter asking about his brother. We tend to only forgive people that much who are actually in our family, right? Because <laughs> we have to get along with them. So we're a little more willing to overlook problems there. The people closest, us, closest to us also are the ones who can hurt us the most. They have the most claim on our forgiveness and they are the best at hurting us in some ways. At any rate, our Lord cuts through all of that all of these distinctions and limits by in effect saying the duty to forgive is unlimited. It is seven times 70. Seven, of course, is the biblical number of perfection. So he's saying really infinitely, totally, completely, always we have a duty to forgive. We have a duty that is without limit. Whether or not we're in the right, whether or not we have done it all before. The law is forgiveness. Please let me add that we are talking here about an attitude of the heart. If a husband hits his wife, she should, if he will not seek help and change, get out, get help, and maybe even press charges. That is not inconsistent with forgiving. Forgiveness does not require of us self-destruction. But likewise, self-preservation and prudence do not exempt us from forgiveness. Until an injured person begins to forgive and strives to forgive, he or she cannot really be whole and healed. After stating the law of forgiveness, our Lord secondly tells a parable that warns of the negative consequences of a failure to forgive. In the parable, the Lord forgives a sermon, servant a debt which amounts in our money to millions and millions of dollars. The Lord is deeply angered when that servant fails to forgive a fellow servant a rather small debt, a few dollars. The Lord delivers the unforgiving servant, we're told, to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due. In effect, the Lord imposes a permanent punishment since the unforgiving servant will never be able to acquire the millions of dollars necessary to pay his debt. The story adds to the simple statement of a duty, a simple statement of duty that comes before. Here we are not just dealing with two equals, two brothers. We are dealing with a mighty Lord who can give away and forgive millions of dollars and a servant who is very poor and squeezes a fellow servant just for a few dollars. Our Lord is adding something. Now there are two equals in the story, the fellow servants, but what the story is adding is another dimension. It's not just a story about these two servants, it's about the, these two servants dealing with each other in relation also to their Lord. So there is a party standing above this conflict involving the two servants. So what our Lord is doing here is he's showing Peter why he has to forgive by reminding him that he and his brothers are not the only actors in the little drama. There is someone standing above them and taking account of what is going on. Our human relationships do not exist in a vacuum. God is always present as an interested party in what we are doing with each other. We may dismiss God, we may neglect him, we may not think about him, but he is involved. If we hate another person, we are hating God. If we fail to forgive someone else, we close ourselves off to God's forgiveness. If we deal with other people, when we deal with other people, we are always in the position of one servant dealing with a fellow servant. How we treat our fellow servants is always of concern to our common master. Peter asked originally about a horizontal matter, two brothers. What our Lord is doing is he's adding the vertical dimension. The brothers have a common father, the servants have a common master. Our Father in heaven, the common Lord and Master, calls us to forgiveness. The law is forgiveness, and the law has an enforcement. Our Heavenly Father, Christ threatens, will deliver us to the tormentors if ye from your hearts 
forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. I call you to this duty to forgive in the name of our Savior as you love your own soul and as you hope for your own salvation. 